lunar program is called Artemis, right? Named after the uh, twin sister of Apollo and uh, goddess of the moon. And um, it has multiple components. So there will be uh, uh, robotic uh, missions, both landers and rovers. Those are important, not only for science of the moon, but also to plan out our um, missions for astronauts to the surface. One thing we're really interested in is um, developing and collaborating on rovers that can go to the South Pole of the Moon and actually go down into the permanently shattered craters and characterize the water resources. Because we know from remote sensing there's tons of water, frozen water, on the poles of the moon. And we want to characterize how the water is bound with the soil to see if we could extract it and use that water for water, oxygen, fuel, etc. So um, that's the robotic part of it. Then um, phase one of the crude part is uh, Compo uh, consists of the Orion and SLS, the launcher and spacecraft, uh, developing a gateway. It's kind of a user reusable command module in orbit around the moon and in the landing system. So the crew will, uh, will travel to Earth, from Earth to the gateway in Orion. Uh, they'll dock with the gateway, then they'll get in the landing system, go to the surface of the moon, and then back to the gateway in Orion, back to Earth. So that'll be in 2024. Right, so we'll have a set of launches and, and assemble all those pieces in lunar orbit to do that first surface mission. And then in beyond 2024, we want to expand the gateway, uh, develop capabilities and systems on the surface for a sustained presence on the moon. So that's one of the big differences between Apollo and Artemis is we're not doing five missions and stopping. We plan to do a, a series of missions, at least one every year for not years but decades to, for a sustained presence around and on the moon. The other big difference between Apollo and, and Artemis is international collaboration. So after the first mission to the surface in phase one, we want to collaborate with Canada on the robot arm for the gateway, um, ESA for a habitation module called the IHAB so we can extend our stays on gateway and extend stays on the surface from a week to a month as well as a, uh, a, a, utilization, a science utilization module uh, on the gateway, which ESA is looking at providing so we can do science and maybe deploy payloads through an uh, airlock on, uh, on, on the gateway. And then as we move to longer surface days, we're going to look to ESA and our other par partners, JAXA and Roscosmos and others, to collaborate on habitation systems on the surface, mobility systems on the surface, and maybe technology to exploit the water resources. The biggest challenge that we have is schedule, time. We, don't, we only have less than five years now to do the first mission to the surface in 2024 with astronauts. So this, this program will be very challenging from a, a schedule perspective. Uh, and of course, we will need the funding to uh, pursue that really aggressive schedule. But with any, any uh, space systems development activity, we roll on into technical problems and challenges. And we seem to be, um, you know, one of, the, one of the really challenging systems seems to be propulsion systems. And you need a very reliable, very capable propulsion system to get you to, you know, lunar orbit and to get you from lunar orbit to the surface and then back up to, to lunar orbit. So we'll both need a, uh, uh, a descent system to get the crew down to the surface and then an asset module which the crew will be kind of their home on the surface which will take them directly back to the gateway so you know it just seems like uh, those propulsion systems are very complex with a lot of uh, uh, components and we've had some real challenges on our robotic as well as our uh, crewed spacecraft in uh, developing you know those very uh, complex you know very uh, capable systems. Landing on the moon is very different than landing on Mars because the moon does not have much any atmosphere to speak of and Mars has a atmosphere that is much, much less dense than Earth, but still one that you need to get through from very high hypersonic speeds, very high speed, you know, down through uh, supersonic, subsonic down to the surface in seven minutes, right? From the time you hit the top of the atmosphere to to land on, on the surface of Mars. It's, it's very, very challenging. And so um, we can land, right now we can land about one metric ton on the surface of Mars. The Curiosity rover and the rover 2020 is a little less than you know one metric ton. Uh, for human missions, we'll have to land maybe 20 metric tons. 
So that'll be the vehicle that takes the astronauts from the surface of Mars back to an orbiter and then back to Earth. Um, and so that's going to be very, 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 very challenging to figure out how to, you know, increase our ability to land systems on Mars by a factor of 20. So uh, we have some uh, some advanced architectures and technology development to do that, uh, but the only way to test it is to go to Mars and land something heavy on Mars. So that'll be something that the moon actually won't help us out with. But um, with respect to um, like precision landing and hazard avoidance using sensors, we can do test those on our landers on, on the moon. Uh, rovers, mobility systems for astronauts, habitation for astronauts, even exploitation of the water on the moon. We can use some of that technology of uh, exploitation of the subsurface water on Mars. Um, so on, this, on, the, on the surface, there's some technology and capabilities that will develop on the moon that'll kind of feed forward to Mars. Landing is, on Mars is very unique. We're going to have to develop new capabilities, technologies and capabilities to land much more massive systems. I think there's, uh, we have collaborated on science missions. Uh, where Polish industry, in collaboration with the universities, has developed have developed sensors for uh, curiosity, for um, insight, uh, for the Molon Molon Insight, and uh, and also for a mission called IMAP, uh, to uh, a, a sensor suite called GLOWS. So, definitely on the science side, there's uh, both for science of the moon as well as putting maybe instruments on the gateway or on the surface of the moon to do. At, you know, astrophysics um, observation, astrophysical observation. I think there's opportunity there, um, as well as you know. I know there's going to be like on the habitation module that ESA will contribute for the gateway. I know there's going to be, uh, you know, very much collaboration between uh, European industry to provide all the systems and all the capabilities that are going to be need to have a module that the astronauts can you know live in for a month or so at a time um, ar around the moon. Uh, then, you know, um, and, and I, I, I'm sure there'll be opportunities also, uh, particularly on, uh, you know, robotic systems, rover and robotic systems for the surface. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, through ESA, through collaboration between ESA and NASA, also through cl direct collaboration with, you know, um, industry uh, in, in Europe and Poland and our industry, I think there's, there will be lots of opportunities.